when you were a kid, was the kitchen a fun place of childhood discovery or a dangerous place of cuts and burns that was only meant for adults? How do you think the rest of your life might have been different if someone had shared the five kitchen truths that kids need to know to become better adults? I'll share them today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code, every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cook's Code. Hey, welcome back to the Carefree Cook's Code, everyone. This is the free public weekly show for the methods, techniques, and insights into better food and cooking. We're live every Tuesday at noon Eastern right here on my Chef Todd Moore page on Facebook. And since this is open to the public, nobody pays to see it, please share it with as many people as you would like. Uh, and if you'd like to get an email reminder of when I'm going live, sign up at webcookingclasses.com slash live. And if you want to see what I'm cooking and how I, well, except for this week, I guess I must not have posted anything. Uh, go to Chef Todd Moore on Instagram. How do we do it? Well, we're carefree cooks. We create our own recipes. We bring friends and family together. We learn every time we cook, creating our own cooking style, all because we practice pro methods and you wind up loving your cooking. This is going to be fun. Let, let's get going right away because I've got a really important topic to talk to you about today. How your child or your grandchild lives their life as an adult may depend on it. And, and this is something very important to me. Nothing could be more important than the effect that you have on your child or your grandchild. But first, let's play a silly game. Uh, <laughs> it's a what am I? Uh, tell me in the comments section below, what am I? Chinese gooseberry. It's been renamed. What's it called now? Tell me what am I in the comments section below. Okay, I'm glad we're back together again because I have so much I want to talk to you about. There, there is way more information in my head that I can possibly get into your brain in just 30 minutes a week. And I'm constantly thinking of new things that I want to share with you. That's why I keep popping up live. And oh my goodness, somebody needs to see this. I think it's so fantastic coming up with new ways to get the best cooking methods to get you the advice you need in a way that sticks in your head. Yeah, I'm a chef. Yes. But if I cook you a meal as a chef, you eat for one day, right? Teach someone to cook, the fish, whole thing. You know how that saying goes. But I consider myself an educator first. I mean, I, I proudly call myself a chef because I have a dual culinary degree in professional cooking and baking. Um, I've held some big executive chef jobs. I've purchased food and cooked for thousands of people a day. But all that aside, I would call myself an educator first. And that's why I was so proud to earn my certified culinary educator accreditation in 2013. It's back there on the wall somewhere. And I have always taught something here. Here I am 35 years ago teaching swimming to children. I was a lifeguard at a community pool and a certified water safety instructor. Imagine that at whatever, 17 years old. I, I just have always loved to teach and I still love to teach every day. It's what I live for. I, I read your comments. I, I, I love when we try and help someone's frustrations, when you give someone a new perspective on something that they may, may never have thought of before. That's what I try and do. I, I, that's the joy in teaching. When someone gets that aha moment from me that opens all kinds of doors. Oh my goodness, I never thought about it this way. And now that I thought about it this way, all these other things are coming true for me. Adults are some of the hardest people to teach. 
because they carry a lot of uncertainty, a, a lot of jaundiced eye, you know? Something that you try to teach to an adult usually has to overcome something that they already know, something that they already believe to be true. As an educator, I know that this is the barrier. Teaching an adult means breaking down what they already know, and they hold dear very often. Often, you have to help an adult realize that they've been wrong <laughs> about the way that they think, and they don't like that. <laughs> but you can motivate them to start thinking in a new way, and that's why adults are so much harder than children to teach. Adults need to reset to adopt something new. Children, totally ready to hear new things, right? They're sponges, you hear this. If you have young kids or grandkids, be very careful. They are listening to everything you say, interpreting it through their own eyes, and they are mirroring it the first chance they get. They are so impressed with everything you do because you're the one showing them how to do it. And if you have grandchildren, you are especially exalted in a child's mind. You're so much wiser, older, kinder, <laughs> than their mother. No, they, well, you're the mother or father of their mother or father, which is a little baffling to kids at first. Plus, generally you give them cool stuff and you don't discipline them that much, right? <laughs> this is why you know being a grandparent is so much better than being a parent once you get through all these things about being a parent. But look, this is where I get back to teaching adults because these young humans they have wide open ears, wide open eyes, wide open minds, and they're going to become adults that are then harder to teach. Your relationship with them now may have a huge impact on the adults they become later. And really, there are two types of adults that I have taught cooking to over the decades that I've done it. The first were those that were brought into the kitchen at a young age by mom or grandma. Uh, in my case, it was grandpa. Milton Moore there was, and that's me at five years old, I think. Milton Moore was the cook in the family. And when I was a kid, it baffled me that my grandfather, a male, was doing all the cooking, right? So I, <laughs> this is the 1960s. I, at five years old, had these chauvinistic ideas. I don't know if that was true, but I did know that the mom is supposed to do the cooking. And if you knew my grandmother, Ivy, a very proper English woman from Wimbledon, Ivy Mansfield, you'd know Ivy doesn't bother with things like that. These people are curious, right? They want to explore in the kitchen. They want to have more confidence. They are free and without fear. As an educator, that's the person I would want to teach. Someone who wants to explore, has confidence, free, no fear, likes to try new things. The children are so much easier to teach because they're willing to give up what they already think they know for something new and different. The opposite of adults. But this can be scary. And that's what defines the second type of adult I teach. These are the children who were told that the kitchen is a dangerous place that you're always in the way, that you can cut yourself, you can burn yourself. It's just no place for children. So this child that grew up to be an adult versus the first type of child that grew up to be an adult, who do you think the starting perspective, uh, the, who has the better starting perspective on cooking? The second type of person, no, don't touch. Oh, you're going to burn yourself. Oh, you're in the way. They have no confidence, right? They're incredibly serious about their cooking when I meet these adults because a possible disaster lies at every corner. These are the people that try to measure everything precisely. These are the people that cook for three to five minutes because the recipe tells them to. They're tight. They're protective. They're on the defense in the kitchen. They're really hard to teach. Their parents have messed it up for me. <laughs> it's an even harder wall to get through. Now, not impossible, but much harder than the adult whose mind was opened at a much younger age by grandma, grandpa, or grandpa Milton. But there's a third adult 
that I'm encountering lately. And this third type of person has none of the characteristics of the previous two. They weren't welcomed into the kitchen by grandma, nor were they shooed away by mom. They never went in the kitchen at all. And neither did their mom. There is a cooking dead end that happened somewhere around the mid-70s, as far as I can figure. Passing on respect for food and cooking came to a complete halt. Now, if you were a child in the mid-70s, like I was, your mom probably cooked dinner just about every night of the week. In your home, the kitchen was the center of activity. This home where there was one telephone bolted to the wall with that long, tangled cord handset strangling those clotheslining everyone that walked past it, the rotary dial phone was the conduit to the outside world, but not the only type of communication going on in your kitchen. Your mother or your grandmother was communicating knowledge that it was timely, right? Communicating more knowledge than the phone ever would. And you as a child witnessed all of this occurring before you. There was fresh food at the grocery store. There was meat from the town butcher. Did you have it? I had a town butcher. Yeah. Sawdust on the floor. And even ingredients from your own backyard garden then. You knew what food was because it passed before your eyes every day, every night, right before you cooked, you knew where that food came from. That one room in your home, the nice olive green kitchen in your home, generated the excitement of dinner time together of family gatherings, of visitors in the neighborhood or from across the country, the holiday meals, the smells of the food cooking. I'm sure you can remember it to this day. You can remember your childhood kitchen. You probably did your homework on the kitchen table as mom prepared the, the classic meat and two sides every night, right? But if you were a child growing up after the mid-70s, you probably stayed in the living room. You probably watched the boob tube. Did it ruin your eyesight? I was threatened with that, right? Ruined your eyesight for the rest of your line, mind, <laughs> the rest of your life, rotted your mind, as your mom said, as she heated up the Swanson TV dinner or mixed some ground beef with the hamburger helper. If you were a kid in the 80s or 90s, it got even worse because you probably saw Ma pick up the phone and call for takeout or pizza delivery, 30 minutes or less. I mean, come on, great guarantee. So at this time, where's all the love gone? Where, where, where's the love of cooking? Where's the enjoyment of choosing your meat from the local butcher? The exhilaration of growing your own tomatoes, where's it gone? And with the decline of the household kitchen as the epicenter of body and soul nutrition in the home, there can be none of this anymore. So let's stop this trend right now. To create healthy adults, we have to be sure kids know what healthy food is. They gotta be able to identify it. They have to know how to get it. They gotta know what to do with it. And based on what I've witnessed in food culture over the past decades, I believe that there are five wonderful things that can happen surrounding food and the kitchen that should be mandatory for making tomorrow's adults better people. And there are five kitchen truths that your kids need to know to become better adults. But remember, it's up to you to show them these things. First, food is nature. Food is not factory. So grow something. A child of any age can be so shown how seeds turn into plants. And it's thrilling for them to watch something grow. It teaches so many lessons. You don't need a backyard garden like grandma had. Even if you live in the city, a few flower pots with herbs are exciting when you can use them together in a meal. Number two, share the truth. Share the truth about where, where food comes from, including meat. Be sure they know that the Mega Mart grocery stores aren't the only people that sell food. Take your child or your grandchild to a farmer's market. Take them to a roadside stand. Introduce them to a cow and explain what happens to a cow or a chicken. Show them that there are people whose lives are dedicated to providing food to the community beyond a faceless corporation or a huge mega grocery store. Beef comes from cows. Pork comes from pigs. 
Chicken comes from chickens. It's just a fact. Our main sources of protein don't start at the grocery store, and many children think they do. Now, again, the object is not to inflict any political agenda on your young child. <laughs> don't terrify the child with too much of this information, okay? No slaughterhouse videos. We, we don't need that. You'll be making a vegetarian. Only you can decide if the time is right to tell them about cows and chickens. But make them aware that food is a natural item that doesn't come from a factory. There are benefits and consequences to the way we raise and eat food. Let your kids know both sides when they're at the right age, when you think you can have that conversation with them. Number three, cheap food and fast food is not more exciting. Going to McDonald's should not be a special night out. Don't make fast food out to be more than what it is. It's cheap and convenient. Be sure you help them start to identify good quality food versus good quality marketing. You can take your child to the drive-thru, but make it apparent that this is not the best way to eat. Time in the kitchen together is much higher quality than time in the drive-thru line. Number four, teach them that kindness comes from the kitchen. Prepare meals. Do some baking for someone in need with your children. Bring them to, with the children, with the baked good, to the person in need. Contribute to the community bake sale with something that you bake together. Volunteer at a local food charity. Show them another perspective on people that do and don't have food. Because you can demonstrate that food is love, food is caring, cooking is kindness. That, that's an impactful lesson on a future adult. Number five, bring them into the kitchen at an early age. Help to create the first type of adult that I told you about. Show your kids and your grandkids that the kitchen is a safe place. It's a place where confidence grows. It's a place where creativity is expressed. The kitchen is fun and exciting. Don't tell your kids that cooking is difficult. Don't tell them it's dangerous. Don't tell them they can hurt themselves or ruin dinner. No matter what the age, they can help with cleaning string beans. They can stir something. They can place items on a plate. Anything that gets them involved in an early respect for food and a starting place to learn how to cook. The food pressures are heavy on kids today. The exciting food is cheap. It's readily available. It comes with a lot of marketing. Home cooked meals are not, unless you make them preferable to the lesser foods by including your children in the entire cycle of good food and how it impacts their enjoyment, their nutrition, their health, and ultimately their adulthood. Create an adult palate early in life. Share all the things that should be occurring in and around the kitchen. It could be the heart of the home where children become great adults by respecting food and learning basic cooking skills. So when you do bring your children or grandchildren into the kitchen, cooking teaches them dozens of things. Cooking teaches organization, a place for everything and everything in its place. Cooking teaches patience. No, the cookies aren't ready yet. They will be ready in three minutes. Let's see what three minutes is. It teaches precision, measurements, how to do it right, how to measure things, a little bit of math, right? One of the best ways to teach math is through cooking. It teaches science. How do things happen? Why do they happen? It teaches hand coordination, stirring, pouring, Mixing, decision-making, how to overcome disappointments, problem-solving, how to fix it for the next time, a respect of hazards, because yes, the kitchen is dangerous, but you respect them, nutrition and what it means to the body, earth science and why food grows in some places and not others, social skills, uh, the put-it-back-where-you-found-it rule, <laughs> respect for equipment, respect for teacher, communication, a sense of pride, confidence, creativity, all lifelong skills. These are the things that they will never forget and they learn them in the kitchen cooking with you. It's powerful. You know, we talked about cooking resolutions a few weeks ago at the beginning of the year. 
Wouldn't that be a great res resolution to make? Bring somebody else into the kitchen and share what you've learned? Resolve to spend more time with your kids or your grandkids in the kitchen, even if it's over Zoom, you know, with someone helping, because you'll have a much better year and you'll create a much better adult. Um, look, here's a disclaimer. I don't have kids, so take it for what it is, but I've taught kids and I know they're hungry for knowledge. They want you to share adult things with them because making a better adult starts in the kitchen. Uh, so let's get back to the what am I for today. What's a Chinese gooseberry? The Chinese gooseberry has a great marketing department behind it because they changed their name to kiwi fruit. Sounds a lot better than Chinese gooseberry, doesn't it? Kiwi fruit was originally Chinese gooseberry. And look, if you know someone who could benefit from a, a new childlike acceptance of a new way of looking at cooking, please like and share this video with them and share it with the rest of the internet while you're at it so everyone can benefit from today's Carefree Cooks Code. And if you've been struggling, stuck in a rut with the same meals and limited variety, then you're going to love this week's free online class because it combines the step-by-step -step cooking methods with creative ideas that are gonna get your juices flowing. The class is called the Meal Multiplier Formula to Get Dinner Done, and I share my six element formula for inventing meals on the fly, and you can choose from the upcoming classes at webcookingclasses.com slash multiply. So until next Tuesday, when we take even more steps toward breaking the Carefree Cooks Code, this is Chef Todd Moore reminding you that there's a method to the next generations cooking success.